Okay, so, um, so we left off uh, at the very bottom, or the Lamed Hay of an Aleph, I should say Lamed Hay of the, the Bay is the very top. The sugya that we're dealing with is the, 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 the latest question is whether or not when um, a property is taken as collateral, there are rights of redemption. That's essentially what the Gemara is trying to uh, grapple with whether or not you if you if you take a property because there is a creditor who's owed that money and he takes the property in lieu of then can you redeem it later for money so the gemara was making a fill up uh depending on the circumstance and and uh, we have the the the, the, uh, the group from the herdoi who said you could either redeem it after a year or always redeem it and then the gemara came and made a general fill and said that there are the generally speaking you can but there are a couple of exceptions and the exceptions are when there is an outright sale or a gift or an inheritance where the intent of the giving of the property is the property itself there's no question that we weren't substituting money for property because in some cases um, a person doesn't want to be encumbered with property he wants to have the cash but if you don't have cash, you have to give them collateral. So therefore, when you give collateral, the idea is that you should have the right to redeem the collateral. That's the general consensus. When you're selling a property, you're not selling cash, you're selling the property. So there, it's more of an imprint on the, on the transaction that it's the property that is really um, what's given. Same too with the Yerusha. You're not giving cash for the Yerusha, you're giving... Uh, an item, and the same is true with the matana. When you give a matana, uh, that you give the matana and not the cash. So those, uh, the consensus is you cannot exchange. Now, if there's a voluntary exchange or something else, but can, can you come back a year, a half a year, a year later, and say, you know what, that collateral I gave you is like at the pawn shop. Uh, you know, I, I gave you a, a, an item, and typically, I imagine I, I haven't experienced it, but with the pawn shop, you probably don't have an unlimited amount of time. You have a certain amount of time because you can go and cash uh, and cash it on and cash it out. So if you if you don't make it, then that item can be sold. If it happens still to be there, maybe they allow you. But the, the idea is that you have a limited amount of time to cash out. And, and then um, it belongs to the creditor who you gave it to. So that's the, the background of where we are. And on top of Lamed Hay, Omid Bay's, um, we're going to finish this sugya right now. And the Gemara here talks about a different twist. Until now, we've been talking about a case of involuntary seizure, what we call where the creditor, either the Besan steps in or, or um, he, he doesn't voluntarily turn it over if, 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 if something is owed then uh, the, maybe the Bezdin uh, or, or the parties work it out so that the creditor gets the item. Says the Gemara on Lamed Hay Omed Bey, the very top, Agvei i Bechovo. What happens in a different circumstance where the debtor goes directly to the creditor and says, you know, I owe you money um, from a loan and um, Here's, here's, here's some property. I own property. And I don't want to be a Balchov. Take the property in lieu of the debt that I owe you. And, um, and, uh, and Zehu, right? So in other words, it's not up until now we've been talking about where the creditor gets it from the Besden by force. The, the debtor doesn't want to give it. And now he gives it because he has no choice. So now he wants to redeem. But what happens if by choice he gives it to him? He says, here it is, take it. Agvi Bechovo says Rashi, Leel Mehide Gabi Shuma Kloma, in Lo Shame Bezden, the Malva Al Korcho Shalove. No, there's no Bal Korcho, there's no by force. Kimle, Naatsmo, he gets up by himself, he doesn't even involve the Bezden. Ramalo, tell Karka there, Bechovo, take this Karka Bechovo, I owe you money, take this Karka, Bezden's not involved, then what should be the halacha? Should there be a right of redemption or not? That's the question that the Gemara is posing here in this, in this uh, particular instance. So is that the Gemara, Pligibar of Achav or Avinah? 
is a machloikis between Rav Acha and Ravina whether or not there are rights of redemption. Chadama Hadra, the Chadama Lo Hadra. One man the Omar says you can return it, means you're allowed to cash out that item, even though he did it voluntarily. And um, the other one says no, that you can't cash out. So that's a general machlaitis. So now what's the basis of the machlaitis? Let's understand why one man the Omar says yes, why one man the Omar says no. Man the Omar Lo Hadra, the one who says you cannot return it, meaning that you gave it to him, so it's his, and you don't have a right later to come and say, you know what, I have cash. I'd rather get my collateral back for the cash. What's the theory? He says, it's, it's like Zvina, it's like a sale. Remember, we said that Zvina Zavin was one of the exceptions to the rule, that if you sell it, you're selling the property. So there are no rights of redemption because you never meant to even intend to redeem, all you wanted to do is just give it out. So he says, if you do it voluntarily, that's Vina. That's Pshat's Vina, that you're selling it. So therefore you have no right to come later, six months, a year, whatever it is, and says, you know what? I'd like my chayfets back. And here's the money for the chayfets. So th that's the theory of the Manda Amma who says that lo hadra. The Manda Amma hadra, but the Mandama who says yes, that you can give it back, he has a different approach. So for loads of minima it's not a sale. You can't equate it to a sale, which is the real deal. The high, the agri, the date, but but he did it by, of his own volition. He didn't involve Bezin. He went directly to the guy. He says, Here, you be my you're my creditor. I don't want to owe you money. Here's a chafetz. So it's very plain what he did. Why should he have a right to redemption? Well, also the Dina Mahmas. Because he was embarrassed to um, actually go to Besdin and create a, a sort of a scene in Besdin where they have to officially register it or whatever, whatever you have to do for Besdin is something that the public will become knowledgeable of. And he didn't want that. He was embarrassed, right? So because he was embarrassed, uh, he, he sort of kind of slid in there and said, okay, do me a favor, take this property, it's just me and you. So according to this Manda Amar, it was never intended to be permanent. It was intended to be a stopgap. And as soon as he got the money, then he was able to uh, exchange. So, so we see from this Gemara that, the, uh, again, the question is, what rights does a person have when he gives a chayfetz for collateral? That's the issue. And the tarot says, that depending on how you look at it, uh, he, when he does it with a creditor as a Besden, okay, no question about it. The Besden took it by force. There's more of a likelihood to say he didn't mean to give him this chayfetz, but he had no choice. So now he wants to redeem it. So, okay, uh, we're going to allow him to redeem it. But when he did it by choice, what, what's the Havamina? So the Mar explains that the Havamina is, according to that Manda Omar, that he was embarrassed and he didn't want to go forward with a big uh, uh, Bezdin procedure. So he just gave him the Chayfetz and Mamela, he didn't mean it. And once you uh, don't mean it, yeah. Yeah, so uh, one that, maybe we've talked about this before, I don't know. The, uh, there could also be issues of change of value. You gave the collateral, used the collateral that was it was a nominal value of $100 for a loan of $100. It's perfect and so it's okay. You know what? Here you keep the collateral because uh, I can't pay all the cash or whatever, and call it done. And then six months later, this particular thing uh, has become, you know, uh, all of a sudden in demand, and now it's worth one hundred fifty dollars. He might want to get it back because it's say, well, if I now pay off the hundred dollar loan and I get my thing back, and I'm going to make money. Otherwise, it's my money make. You know, there could be these kinds of backs and forth where it's more than just oh, he feels like getting the object back. Right, but if you remember that about Lamed Hayim and Aleph, when we had the, 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 that that very discussion, well, I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the the kasha there was by the earring when 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 he misplaced the earring, and um, and and so he gave him collateral. The collateral was real estate, and before you knew it, uh, the real the, the the real estate became extremely valuable. And he came back and he said he wanted his real estate back, and 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 the guy kind of what do you mean? Uh, you know, uh, it, it it should be mine. 
So, so th there, actually, the Gemara quotes the, the Gemara here. That, that was a case that came before of Nachman. And, and the Gemara says, but we're, it says on the Mafkid that, that, um, that if you pay back the amount, and uh, then, then you're entitled to the future, to the future appreciation, i.e. Kefal. They were talking about Kefal. But, but you, you're entitled to a future appreciation, just like you just said now. So I took the risk, right? I gave you your money back. I took the risk. The risk happens to be that the appreciation of the, of the value of the property uh, uh, it did appreciate. So why shouldn't I have be the beneficiary? Again, the, there the Gomorrah made a fillet between whether or not you went to Besdin or not. So when you went to Besdin, uh, you don't get the appreciation. Otherwise, you do get the appreciation. That's what the Gemara wanted in the Mechalik there. But but the, the question is a valid one. Is so so. Um, but but again, we came to a conclusion that a creditor is really a creditor. Um, in most cases, except for those exceptions, one of the exceptions we said if he sold it to him or or, or Yerusha or whatever. So Bedera Chlal were saying that if if a person does it and it's not one of the items, not one of the areas where it's clear he gave him the chayfetz for the chayfetz, not in lieu of something, so then, then he should have, he has rights. The Gemara says that it's, it's not fair because just because he didn't have uh, the ability to pay back in time, they accepted a, a collateral. So notwithstanding that it did appreciate, it was never intended to be the, the end game. It was intended to be a stopgap until he could pay cash. Now, the parties can make up their own rules and they can say, look, I'm I, I don't really want to take this, but if you can redeem it, like again, like a pawn shop, if you can redeem it in six months, then I'll, I'll agree to give it back to you. Then he has no time later if it appreciates. But, but if it's longer than that, then um, uh, again, unless you're from Nardoi, where they say, um, then in most cases, if a person says, okay, I'll take it, it's a done deal, then, uh, then, then it's then it's over. Then it's over. I mean, you, 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 a person relies on it. Let's say to use the property for his own mashkin. Remember what we said. We said that, that there are circumstances when a person is a creditor, and then he gives it to his creditor, right? So if he gives it to his creditor, the Gemara there said that the second creditor shouldn't be better than the first, right? Because he has no greater rights. But at some point. Um, the, the deal, there is a finality to the deal. Either they, they timed it and they said, I'll hold it for six months, nine months, and you got to give me the money by then. But um, but the Derek Klau, um, uh, a, a, um, a chayfetz, if it's not one of those exceptions, the idea is that he didn't mean to give it to him in exchange for the debt. It was a temporary thing. Then the question becomes, what is temporary? And the Gemara already explains to us and says, you know, that... Um, that um, uh, if if it's if it's if it's without saying so in so many words that it's it, again it, it could be for a very long period of time that the parties can make an agreement to say well I'll hold it for six months or Besden can intervene but the derech klal unless it's one of those three items that was meant as a as a um, as a permanent transaction it seems from the Gemara that um, uh, there is some leeway. Now, to more specifically answer your question, because we have to go to the very next Gemara, because the next Gemara is going to identify the, the, what you're really asking. What you're really asking is, if I get a mashkin, if I get a collateral, and, um, and, and, and it's not meant to be permanent, when does permanence come in? That's really the question. Because, I mean, at some point, you got to say there's a finality. And that's what this next Gemara, which we're about to, this last piece of Gemara before the Mishnah, is going to give us a sense of what is permanence. And it's going to go back to a Gemara that we had in the first parak of Baba Metzia. You'll recognize the Lushan in a minute. And it's going to tell us that what is considered permanence. So what am I talking about? Okay, says the Gemara, from when can the creditor start eating the fruit, which is what you're asking, Menasha? In other words, 
when is it his? It's nice, it's nice to put it on the shelf, but at some point he wants to use it, he wants to have the benefit of it. And if it's only a temporary thing that it's not meant for him to be using, then, then what does he have? He has a mashka and he has collateral, but he can't use it. Trek the Gemara, me echel ochel period. From when can he start eating the fruit? Meaning it's no longer a temporary, it's permanent. So we have a machloikis between Rabba and Abaya, Abaya Rabba and, and Rabba, all three weigh in. Okay, so says Rabba, Rabba Oma Mithimate Adrachta, Liyade. You remember? We had in the first parak, we had the sugya where uh, where the bezdin issued an adrachta. So let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi will explain. Name is how from Peria, Misha Shamalo bezdin karka bechova, a person who got karka uh, land as a chov uh, as a payback, right? Meemes who kanuya lo laochel peris. When laochel peris? When is it his that he could start eating the fruit, the produce of the of the of the um, of the ground because short of that you say that's not his it doesn't belong to him he's still holding a mashkin he's still holding a collateral so there's got to be finality the gemara isn't saying that this is forever emphat the gemara adrachta remember the adrachta says rashi lachatishim yon after ninety days she nifshes hadin after ninety days after the psak din the amirim perikama we said earlier in our gemara in, in the first parak. The best in Kosvin Adrachta, the best in Whites in Adrachta, Star Psakdin, all right, Anichse Lobe, Shibachol Mokum Shim, Timishalo, Yakakta Mosul or Star. So, so let's refresh our recollection. And Adrachta was, he came to Bezdin, he said, This fellow owed me money, I need, I need to collect. He, we knew that he had a real estate empire that was far flung. So the Bezdin said, We're writing you an Adrachta. The Adrachta is, this document you can take to any jurisdiction where you find his property and you can sort of sort of slap it on the property and you can say, okay, I am now claiming this property for a lien that happened in Bybrick, which in other words, in another place. It's usually it would be a local document, but if you get an adrachta, then the Bezin is saying, you know what, we don't know where he is property, but you go search. And once you find it, th that Bezin in that community will honor this warrant, the warrant that we're giving you. That's, what, that's basically what it is. So, 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 so what's the answer? Rabba says, um, when you, um, in other words, he gets the Adrachta. So according to this, 90 days after he gets the Adrachta, he can take the Paris. That, that's what Rabba seems to be saying. So he has, he has okay? So, so first you have to find the property. But once you find the property, then you have 90 days, and then Oisa Paris, you can study in the Paris. Says Abaya, Abaya Oma, Ada Bechosman, Rashi, Yom Shenichtem Shadrachta Bebezen, Afopi Shalopoli Yodo. He's being even more lenient, Abaya. Abaya say, you go to Bezdin, you get an Adrachta, and you have the Adam sign the Adrachta. Do you know where the property is? No. Have you begun the search? No. So you're basically saying that your meter starts running the minute the Aiden signed the Avachta, which is even less than 90 days. That, that, so now you have to find the property, of course. But, but um, so he's being a little bit more lenient and saying that you don't have to wait until um, you find the property because it could take a year to find the property. So basically, the, once the Aiden sign, the moment you find the property, it's yours. That's what Abaya is saying. You don't have to wait. Comes Rava Omar, Mechishlima Yeme Achrazasa. He says, No, I disagree with Abaya and I disagree with Rabba because there's a third step in this process. What is the third step? Says Rashi, Mechishalma Yeme Achrazasa, Afa P. Shiboad Rachel Yodo, even though they, they signed for Dabaya and he got the Adrachta according to Rabba. And he didn't find, uh, he did a, uh, uh, he went on the web and did a worldwide search on the web and he found the pr property was in, uh, in Australia, right? He thought, oh, I have property, I can go, now I can go. He goes to Bezin, 
and they announce Shiesh Kan Karka Limkor. They say, you know what? We're going to hold an auction. There is property to be sold. In Amina Be'erachin, in Bo Ze Be'Kibla Be'Yosin Be'Mash Shama Acherim, and if he's the high bidder, Moshe Nosa Be'Yado, we give it to him. Lacha Shekula Yemei Hachraza. After the days of Hachraza, in other words, you go to the local community, and the local community have, and announces and says. There's a piece of property here that's going on auction on September 1st. So September 1st is when all the bidders are going to come in. Now, if you're the high bidder, it's yours. If someone else is the high bidder, then they get the then they get it, but you get the money. But either, either way, you're going to win. The question is, when can you use the produce of that property? Says, says Rava, you got to wait until there is a final, final achlata. There's a final conclusion, right? Uh, 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 and when um, and when it's paid for, then it belongs to the lover. So in the order of of, of, of um, in the order of things, we see that a buyer is the most lenient because a buyer allows it even when they sign even before the adrachta is issued. Then comes Rabbi and he says, you know what? Uh, once you get the adrachta, then uh, then ninety days um, you, you can you can wait. Comes Rava and says, no, all this is fine and good, but there's no finality. So finality is only when you find the property. Forget about signing. When you find the property and you make arrangements, you make a, an auction, and 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 then somebody buys it. Either you, you are the high bidder because no one else wants it, or someone else is the high bidder. And then at that point, it becomes available. So the answer to the question of when can you finally use the property will depend on how you look at, uh, again, this much like this, but, but, um, but there is finality. The character says that there is finality. At some point, he's gonna be the beneficiary of this property. So then the question arises, what happens if he wants to redeem it before this finality occurs? So then again, the Gemara says, it seems to that uh, uh, certainly the Bnei Nardoi allowed you a great leeway, but even not the Bnei Nardoi, there would be an opportunity to um, to come back and to say, you know what, uh, I want my property. He, here's 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 the money. So um, and and this machloek is between the these Amaroim will sort of guide us as to when is the very very last moment that a person is uh, allowed and entitled to take his property. Because the general rule, uh, remember we used the Pasuk of Sisas, a Yachid as a type, which was the source for the B'nai Nerdoi, why someone should be able to get his property back, is it's the right thing, it's his, okay? There was circumstance why he used it as collateral, but the Sisa as a Yachid as a type is the general rule. So we say that we, we give a person all kinds of leeway, and, and at some point, the leeway runs out. And, and when it runs out, then uh, th this is an example of how it runs out. If there's an auction, um, let's say, and, and it's finally taken care of, then you, you have no time to come back and say, oh, I have the money. I want my property back. No, now it's too late. So that's the end of the sugya. Uh, and uh, so now we have a sense, generally, of what it means to, um, to have collateral and how that collateral uh, can be used um, for the chayv, and 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 at what time in the timeline the t the collateral becomes permanent or not, depending on what the what the what the situation is. Okay, so we finished the sugya. So now we're going to continue on with the mishnah on lamed hay and the bays, and the, the, this mishnah is a little bit of a different twist on our discussion. So says the mishnah, and this is this is extremely interesting. If a person rents a para from his friend. In other words, I come to you, Menashe, and I say, uh, I want, I need your cow. I want to rent your cow. And he rents the cow uh, to do the work. It's a, it's a working cow. Now, comes the third person, okay, the pig Scott. Scott comes and he says, you know, I really uh, could use a, a cow for a short period of time. So you, Menashe, can you um, uh, 
uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm renting it to you, yeah. So you, you have the cow and you paid me for the cow and Stuart, uh, Scott wants to rent it for a week, let's say. And you say, sure, you go ahead and, and I'll, 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 uh, you can borrow it. You can borrow it. No, no money exchange. I, I'm a good guy. I'll let you borrow it. Umesa Tadarka, the animal dies a natural death, right? Mesa Tadarka. Yishava HaSocher Shemesa Tadarka. So the Socher, you, Menasha, have to swear that it died a natural death. Vahashoel Yishalem L'Socher. And Scott has to pay you the money for the animal. So what do we have here? Okay, it's my animal. I own an animal and I rented it to you for $100. Okay, you went ahead and you, you did work with it or whatever you did with it. And then you, you loaned it, okay, Belize Har. In other words, Scott asked you, can I borrow it for a day, for a week? Um, and, 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 but you rented it for a year. So you owe me money for the schar for a year, and uh, and Scott borrowed it for a period of time. It died while it was in Scott's possession. Then the socher you have to swear shemesh kedarka, and the shoel Scott will pay you money. That, that's the fact pattern. Says the Mishnah Rashi. Um, uh, so during the period of his schira, um, uh, he lent it to uh, the third person, Scott. Now, Yeshova Hasok Elamaskir Shemesi Kedarko Upater. So he has no obligation. Why? Shehasok and Chayiv Baonsin. Remember, a socher is Chayiv for certain. For certain uh, um, events that happen to the animal, but not for ones. Mesa Kedarka is an ones. In other words, it didn't die because you abused it or because you overused it. It just it died a natural death. So the idea is when a person rents an animal to use, he's renting it for its use. If it happens to die, why should he be high? It died a natural death, and that was uh, counter to what he was renting the animal for. Right, but Hashoel to chayiv ba'onsin, but a shoel is chayiv ba'onsin. He's chayiv for everything because he's a non-paying customer, so he is chayiv ba'onsin. He mishalem the socher has to pay the socher. So at, on the face of this, what do we see? We see that the socher has made a good bargain because he he paid for an animal. Presumably, the rental was not the value of the animal. The animal could be worth, let's say, $1,000, and he rented it for 100 as an example. So he, he didn't pay the value of the animal, but the animal dies, and, and he, had, uh, uh, he had lent it to someone else to use. That person has to pay $1,000 to the sofa, and the sofa walks away, and the owner gets nothing. That's what this mission seems to be saying. Because the Socha has no recourse. He got his rental money, okay, but that rental money came with the condition of Mesa Kedarka. And, 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 and there was nothing abusive about it. So he got his money. So this looks a little bit odd, right? That the Socha is making business. Now, we have today, and, and I guess it's fairly common, is that in most contracts, there is language in the contract um, th th as to what the rights of the parties are in a circumstance like this. So let me give you an example. If a person would, um, uh, and, and, and it happens in other venues other than just goods and services. But if I give you a piece of property to use, I can create stipulations on the property, what you can and can't do. You cannot, make business with my property. You can't lend it to a third person. And, but there's also an indemnification that if you do something with the property and you make money, that money comes to me. That's how most contracts today are written so that a, 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 it would not be a circumstance where the owner of the property is out in the cold because he has that extra sort of indemnification or protection 
that if something happens to the property through the use of the person who gave it to, then you cannot, uh, you can't make, it's, you can't make what we call a windfall profit. It often happens in real estate, where in real estate, I lease a property to you, you sublease it and make more money than the lease that you would pay me. So, so in, in many cases, there is language in that lease that that's, uh, that's, that's a windfall that um, you either have to give or share with the original owner, with the landlord. So again, we have some protections against that, but according to this Mishnah, it's a wide open case and the Seicha makes off with the thousand dollars worth of animal and all he does paid a hundred dollars in rent to the, um, to the uh, owner. So that, that's L'chaira, what this Mishnah is telling us. Amr of Yaisi, comes of Yaisi, and Ketzad halo oises chora b'ferosa shal chavera. He asks the obvious question, how can he come ahead and make, and make business with the para of his friend, and he should be the winner and the owner should be the loser? In other words, Seichel. Seichel tells us that this should not happen, right? So what does he say? No, you have to return the para to the bala. So we're going to get into, so okay, the Gemara will be more detailed here, but at least on the surface, it seems that Rabbi Yossi, uh, was was not happy with that arrangement. And he came back and said, no, at the end of the day, you got to make him whole. The owner can't walk away with, with a fraction of the money and let someone else get the value of the, of the, of the animal. And since you can't return the para, you have to return the money. So, so that's, that seems to be the machloikis here between the Tanakhama and Rabbi Yossi, is at least from what we see is that Rabbi Yossi comes down and says, you can't do business with Parosa Shofarero. And, um, and what you have to do is you have to repay him uh, the, the, the value. So it, 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 again, the, the Gemara is going to be explain this in more detail, but basically the underlying question and the Gemara is going to ask us is at what point does this event trigger? That's the real question. In other words, when is there liability, i.e. at the time of transaction or at the time when the animal dies? In other words, when the, until the animal dies, it's a normal case of I own, I own a cow, you rented the cow for me, and you, you paid me car and everything good. Now, when does it change? The minute the animal dies. When the animal dies, that seems to be the, the spur, the, uh, the catalyst to having this happen. So let's take a look at the Gemara, and the Gemara will explain. Omri Ravidi Ba'avan Rabaya. Ravidi Ba'avan said to Abaya, Mechdi, let's take a look. How was the soicher kind of the para? In other words, he went ahead and rented a cow. When, when did, in other words, when did that, okay, so we know we make a Kenyan or whatever, whatever has to be done. So when did the rental in effect take place, right? Right? With this, with a shvua, what happened? The animal died. They came to the seicher, and the seicher says, "I swear that it was died a natural death. I didn't do anything to it." So the minute that he makes that shvua, that's the catalyst to kick everything into motion. The name of the masculine seicher. So if it's at the time of the shvua, and he has to make that shvua, the name of the masculine seicher dal an the dal shvuasa. Take your shvua. Don't make a shvua. I don't need your shvua. The animal died. It's no longer a viable transaction. You go your way. I go my way. I still own the animal. I'm still the owner. There's no dispute. I'm going to go to the shoyal. I'm going to go to the third person. And I'm going to say, shoyal, you're chayv and onsen in, in an ones, which this is. Pay me. So that's one view of, the, of, of looking at the Gemara. Why do we have to go through the Seicher and make the Seicher a sort of a, a pivotal part of this, uh, of this event? Dispense with the Seicher entirely. Let the owner say to the Seicher, 
you butt out, okay? And I'm going to deal with the shayel, and I will take care of the shayel. Now, inherent in this, of course, is the fact that the soka paid for a rental. Somehow, he's going to have to be made whole. We're not going to. We're not going to. Let's say he rented it for a year, and this happened three months in. He's certainly entitled to something because he lost a, a months of rental. But why should he be the balabos? That's what the Gemara is saying. Yeah, Michael. Rabbi, maybe I missed something, but if he lent it to the Shoel, if, um, then how can he take the oath that it died by natural causes? Because he doesn't know what happened in the hands of the Shoel. So he, you know, he alone can't take that oath because he wasn't there, presumably, when the death occurred. So isn't that misplaced? So, so it's a valid question, but we, we're making the assumption that, that, that they did an autopsy, whatever. In other words, it's a given that it died of an ones and not of abuse. In other words, we have to take that under, under advisement that, but, whether he, that whether he, whether he was there or not, it became clear that this animal had a heart attack. But the, but it was in the possession of the Shoel at the time. Why doesn't the Shoel have to take an oath that it died of natural cause? Because the Shoel is automatically chayev. He's chayev for onsen. The Shoel is chayev for onsen, even if it died a perfectly natural death. So the Shoel is the one who's stuck with having to pay. It's the question of whether or not the Socher has any liability. And once it's proven that it would die of a, of a heart attack, the Socher can swear... I didn't abuse it. I know that it was that it was. Um, uh, th this is a shmuah that that the chacham mandated that that the the, the 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 person who has the direct nexus to the owner should swear. But you're right. I mean, it has to be it has to be ascertained. We have to. But the circumstances could be that there there it wasn't a natural death. It slipped into a hazard that you know a pit that was there and it died because of that slippage in the in the hands of the show so then isn't there a reversion to where you know yeah, the, the soccer the soccer would potentially be higher correct in other words we have to do the investigation and the investigation somehow showed clearly that it was a natural death you're right if it was not a natural death and the soccer is somehow implicated then he's got to pay but, but the Gemara's assumption here is that we're skipping the Socher because the Socher is totally innocent from anything. He had, he had no uh, uh, culpability at all. I, I have a problem I with that because, because he was, he moved, you know, he moved it without the owner's permission. If he asked the owner, is it okay to, to lend it to a third party, then I understand why he, he's absolved because the owner gave his authorization. Right. But if he did that without authorization, how can the Socher walk okay, away? So, so let me ask you a question. So let me ask you a question. Your, your point is well taken. I rent an animal from you. Unless you give me a laundry list of what I can do with that animal, that animal is now in my possession. I can do what I want with it. I can let it sit for a year, do no work and just graze. I can actually work it. I can ride and let my kids ride it for, for, for pleasure. In other words, there's no restriction on the use of the animal because you've paid for it. You've paid for the right to use the animal. Now you're right. If there was a list of items that said, don't do this to the animal, don't do this to the animal, and you did it, then you're negligent. But short of a list, and on that list was not, you can't lend it to somebody else. It, it, it didn't say that you can't lend it to, to Levi, Yehuda, yourself. Or, okay. uh, right. So, so basically what you have here is you've ascertained that the animal died of a natural cause. The Socher has no liability because he swears. And the Shoel, because he's automatically liable for everything, even natural causes, has to pay. So the Gemara says over here. So, but, but, but Rabbi, Rabbi, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So I'm the third party. I have the, I have the cow. You're the, I show, you're the show out. You're the show right. out. You're the borrower. Right. And I overwork the animal and it dies. Yeah. Okay. Michael can't swear how that animal died, but the fact that I overwork the animal means that he's responsible, right? Right. But again, we have to take the facts, sort of the fact pattern is that it's ascertainable how the animal died. In other words, 
it, it, if an animal dies and you bring in a doctor, you bring someone else and say, oh no, this animal was abused. There's no question it was abused. So it's not as, as if we're in the dark how it died. We know how it died. It died and had a heart attack. The animal had a heart attack. So, I mean, that we have to take it fa face value. Otherwise, you know, we're literally in the dark. So if, if the animal di died of, of a natural cause for which the soha can swear and not have to pay, then, and, and there's no restriction on what he can do with the animal, he, he can, then the shawel owes him the money. So the Gemara here is saying, wait a minute, who says he has to swear? Let the owner come to the soha and say, I don't want your shvua, you, you, you step out. I don't want your shvua to exonerate yourself. I want to deal directly with the shawel. That's the Gemara's kasha. The Gemara's kasha is, why, why should the Socher benefit? Remember, we said that um, Yossi says, how can he do business with the other guy's cow and that the owner will be the loser? Says the Gemara, no. The, the whole thing, this whole thing happened the minute the animal died. Until the animal died, everything was good. The minute the animal died, the Socher makes a Shvua. So before he makes a Shvua, says the Gemara, the owner goes in and says, don't make a Shvua. Let me go ahead and be the... Uh, and, and deal directly with the shoel. So that so says the Gemara. Um, so, so this was a discussion between Rabbi Idi Ba'avan and Abaya. So Rabbi Idi Ba'avan says to Abaya, why is it a problem? Let him dispense with the Shvua and, and he doesn't have to make the Shvua. Amale, so Abaya says, me, now this is the response, me, Sabbath, Socha, Beshvua, Hudikokhani. Do you think that the Socher acquires this cow when he makes the Shvua? Mishas Misa Hudakani. He, he acquires it from the instant it dies, meaning before he makes the Shvua, before the Socher makes the Shvua. Because you have to take him to Bezdin, he has to swear and say that the animal was in good shape and everything else, and it just dropped dead. Okay, so, so he's saying no. The instant that the animal died, who dukani? The soicher becomes the owner the minute the animal dies. The only reason why he makes a shvua is to pacify the owner. So now, if we're saying that the shvua is not what kicks off ownership, but death kicks off ownership, then how can the original owner come to the Socher and says, step away, let me deal with the Shoel? What do you mean step away? I just became the owner of a cow. The minute it died, I became the owner of the cow. So there's nothing to step away. So this is the essence of the Machlaikas now. When is, when does the, the bylaws, when does the ownership of the cow take place or, uh, or, or transfer, I should say, from the owner to the soaker. If you say it does at the time of the shvua, then okay, the owner can say to the soaker, "Don't swear to me. I don't want your shvua. You, you, you. I'll pay you for your lost uh, a rental, but let me deal with it. But if it happens the moment of death, before there's even the possibility of a shvua, then the owner is out of luck because at that point he no longer owns it. It died. He's no longer in the chain of ownership." The Socher owns it, and the Socher can collect from the Shoel, and all he has to do is pay wages, rental wages, to the owner. So that, that's the Machlaikis. When, when in our Mishnah, when Rabbi Yesi says, how is that fair? It's a good question, how is it fair? But the Teretz is, it depends on how you look at Bilas. Is Bilas at the time of the rental, or, or is ownership Bilas at the time of, the de of death? That's what determines whether or not the owner has rights here. If Bilas is at the time of rental, uh, then, then uh, okay, maybe you can tie that. He has, he has, he can void the rental. But the instant it dies, he can no longer rewind the clock. He's, he, he's lost, he lost it. So that's the machlaikis the Gemara is trying to tell us, is the machlaikis, but then why does he make a shua? Um, um, so then the, the, he answers him, okay, you know why you make a shvua is, to, is so, to pacify the owner that he shouldn't go, you know, that he shouldn't really uh, um, 
I'm trying to sue or whatever it happens to be. So you swear, no, 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 this animal was uh, perfectly fine and healthy and died in the course of natural death. So it, it, the shvur is almost immaterial if you hold that bilis exchanges at the time of death. Okay, so Rashi says, Rabbi, yeah, the, the shvur for a selcher in any case is it the rabbanon because the shvur, yes. yeah. Yeah, not the Torah at all. no, no, it's not. It's not a mandatory shvur. So we we make him swear, swear should just that he should know that he has to be an honest broker, so to speak. But 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 if the but if the owner wants to do away with the shvur, he should he should have a right to do it. If it's to his benefit that the the guy shouldn't swear, then he tells him, "Don't swear. I don't want your shvur. Let's just leave it what it is." So you're right, as opposed to a shvur that's mandated where he has to make the shvur, this is not a mandated shvur, and he can dispense with the shvur. Again, we go with the whole theory that people don't take shvurs lightly. So if a person is going to swear, then th th that's sort of a heavy burden. But if he wants to take the burden away from him because it's to his ta'elas, it's to his benefit that he doesn't swear, because then you deal directly with the end game, with the shoel, then why shouldn't he be able to do it? Of course you should be able to do it. Um, now, so let's look at Rashi. To Rashi is b'shvur shuhu nishba l'maskir l'hafiz dato to be mafayish shaloyoma peshas bo. In other words, the owner shouldn't immediately scream, "Oh, you were careless! You were careless!" So you immediately show your bona fides by saying, "I'm going to make a shvur that this was not a uh, accident of any kind. It was a natural death, and that's why you swear." But it's not because the Kenyan happens. With the shvur, the Kenyan happened with the misa, and therefore there's no rolling back and saying um, um, that you can do it. Okay, so that so that's a, a sort of a bird's eye view of the Gemara, and uh, now we understand what that machlokes um, is about. Now, so now comes Reb Zera. And Zeri is going to tell us something that is <laughs> nothing short of uh, sort of fantastic. What's he going to say? Amr Zera, okay, I understand what you just told me. You made a chilek between whether or not it's Misa or, 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 or Sechivas, whether it's the Shvua or whether it's Misa. Pa'amim, listen to this, Pa'amim, there are times, Shehabalim, Mishalmin, Kamaperis, Lasocher. I'm going to give you an example of where I own a, a cow, I rent it to you, and I'm going to wind up paying you, the Seicher, the money for the cow. I mean, that's, 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 that's upside down. I own it. I rented it to you, but I owe you money for the cow. How is that possible? That, that the, the owner will pay several times the value of the para to the socha, not just once, several times. Okay, so let's understand what the Gemara is saying. Okay, so let, let, let's look at it this way. Okay, what's the case of the Gemara and how does it how does it work? Okay, says the Gemara. Agra mene meya yama. I own a cow. I rent it to you for a hundred days. You pay me a hundred dollars for a hundred day rental. And I'm the owner. And I say, you know what? My kids are coming to town. I'd like to borrow the cow so that they can ride the cow. Uh, for, for pleasure. So I'm going to borrow it from you for 90 days. I rented it to you for 100. You paid me $100, but I'm going to borrow it back. Okay? So he borrows it back, Kishin Yoma. And he borrows it back. Now, what happens? So that um, he now has this cow for 90 days of the 100 days that he rented to him. Now, during that 90-day period, Hoda Agrimene Timdin Yoma. 
So the, the renter comes back and says, I know I lent it to you and you have a right now for the 90 days, even though I paid you for a hundred day rental. But you know what? I'd like it back, but since I, since you borrowed it, I don't know that I have really the right to take it back. Let me re-rent it for 80 days. I'll pay you again. I'll pay you a second time, but I need the cow. So the, so the owner says, well, if he needs it, uh, I, I'm, okay, so I'll make, another, I'll make another 80 bucks. So he rents it back to him for 80 days. He's already rented it for 100, borrowed it back for no money, now the, the renter comes and says, I would like to rent it back for 80 days. The renter is a terrible businessman. They're terrible. I'm business. just saying. <laughs> They're a terrible businessman. But they pay paying paying three times for the same cow for the same period right. of time. Uh, unfortunately, being a bad businessman is not a crime. <laughs> if it was, then you're right. But so so, so that's the fact pattern. A hundred days, he borrows it for a period of time. He comes back and he says, you know what? Uh, I know I I, I, uh, I lent it to you, so I don't feel good about taking it back because I'm a nice guy, but I do need the cow. So I'll give you more money for 80 days. So I'm going to tim the yom. And then the story is not finished. The, the, the owner comes back and he says, but you know what? I know I rented it to you for 80 days, and you needed it as an emergency. But now that the emergency is over, can I borrow it for 70 days? So he's coming back and, and he's making a second request to borrow the cow after he leased it to him for 80 days. So that's the pattern. Started with 100, he borrowed it for 90. He came back and rented it for 80. And he came back and said, um, and, and I would like to um, borrow it for 70 days because I know that you only need it for 10 days, even though you rented it for 80. So how about doing it to me? And he says, okay. So obviously these were friendly neighbors and they didn't expect anything untoward to happen. So he says, fine, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, um, to give it to you. Umesa betoch yemei And then what happened? Finally, the, the eventuality was, we can all expect it, that it died. Right, it died during the seventy days during that second event. Right. Um, so now, does this sound familiar? Yeah, that's our mission. Our mission doesn't talk about the owner being the borrower, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the borrower is. The fact pattern of our mission is that he rented it to him, and during the course of the rental, it was borrowed. We're, we're going the extra step and saying it happened twice, but re regardless of whether it happens once or twice, that's, that, that's not the eager. That's, a, that's just a superfluous event, but the event itself is the actual event of our Mishnah. And what does our Mishnah say? Our Mishnah says, um, I mean, it, um, so the, um, um, so we're saying that for each borrowing, for each time he borrowed, he's chayev a para. What does that mean? That means that when the first event occurred, let's say it had stopped at the end of the first cycle. Uh, he rented it for 100 days. He borrowed it for 90. Um, the Mishnah says that if you borrow it and it dies to darka, the seicha can collect the value of the animal. Who owns the animal? The person who, who rented it to him. He now has to pay to the seicha who rented it the value of the animal. So he got a hundred dollars in rental. The animal's worth a thousand. He's got to give the seicha a thousand dollars. The owner, the owner has to give the seicha a thousand dollars because he it died in the course of his borrowing and he is chayiv in onsen. He's chayiv for ones, for, for a simple accident. That's bizarre. Now, this thing happened a second time. It happened a second time where he re-rented it 
and reborrowed it. Then the animal dies. So we have two cycles of this. And now it turns out that he has to pay him double the value of the animal that he owns. Says Reb Zera, the, 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 the owner will have to pay several times over the value of the para to the soicha. I mean, uh, how does that happen? <laughs> okay. So, but he says that's that's the Matthias. Now let's let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi will elaborate, but it, it's it's a fantastic theory that the owner will be indebted to the renter for the value or more than the value of the cow because of this fact pattern. I mean, you can't make it up. But the Fira al pi halacha, if you follow what you, what's the logic, that's what would happen. So let's take a look at Rashi. This is Rashi. The original renters, meaning the owners, the shalman the soicher. Let's follow this along Rashi, but it explains everything. The shalman the soicher. They come a peros a para zoo. On this para, they will pay several times over. The fee divre mishnah seinu, according to the words of our mishnah, according to this halacha. Yeshiu kulam shelo, yeshi yase behem, the meisikirosam the yachzirim. Kaysa. What's the example? Agramine Meya Yama, he rents it for a hundred days, and he borrows it for 90. Ruvain, okay, now we have names. Ruvain Shesaka Para Mishimin. Ruvain rents a cow from Shimon. Shiasabo Malocha Meya Yom. He wants to work it a hundred days. The Fos is Shimon, and Shimon, the owner, comes with Omalo. I say me taiva. Do me a favor. Let me borrow it for, the, for 90 of the 100 days, because I know you don't need it for 100 days. Let me borrow it. And after the 90 days, the first, he's going the first, let me borrow it for the first 90 days, he's saying. He says, let me borrow it for 90 days. And after the 90 days pass, uh, then uh, I'll give it back to you so you'll have use of the cow for the last 10 days of the 100 days that you rented. And he did that. Okay? That's what our Mishnah is telling us. It doesn't matter who the players are. That's important. It doesn't matter that it's the owner. It's, it's, a, um, it, it's a fact pattern. The Tanan Hasecha Parim Chaveira, as we learned that Mishnah Hasecha Parim Chaveira, where she did the Acher betoki makes new also the Mali Balim the Mali Acher. What difference is it if it's the owners who borrowed it or a third person borrowed it? In Mesa Eitzel Shlomo, if it died in the hands of the Shlomo, a Resolcha Potter B'Shvua, the Sochcha is Potter B'Shvua, but Hashoel Mishalem the Sochcha. And the and the Shlomo will pay the Sochcha. So Rashi is telling us. Yes, it's exactly what happened, and it doesn't matter that it was the owner who was the borrower. That's irrelevant. Okay. Chazer Reuven the Bar Etzlo. Now Reuven comes back. He says, "Omalo hiskirli mitishim yom shehu shuula biyotcha." From the ninety days that I that I that you borrowed it, let me um, rent it again. The shdabet bar shmonim yom. And I will rent it from you for 80 days. The tools and take your your um, your rental. Then he's in the Chazaka of a borrower to Shimon. Because he took the star. And if it dies. In the hands of Reuben, who is the owner, or your Reuben Potter Bishvua? I'm sorry, uh, the Seicher. He's he's the renter. Um, if it dies in the hands of uh, Reuben, or your Reuben Potter Bishvua, the Shimon, the owner who borrowed it, Mishalmalo Para Achas Shishol Mimenu, he has to return to him a Para 
that he borrowed, and he's high and honest. Everything we've just said, except substitute the owner for the as the borrower. So it turns out that since the animal died during this 80-day period, he has to replace the value of the animal right away. But wait a minute, he rented it for 90 days. What about the 10 days left in his rental? So the owner now has to supply him the second cow to be able to use for his rental because the animal died. If the animal died, he owes him the money for the animal, but he doesn't have an animal to finish his work. So he's going to come up with a second animal to pay him, to, to let him use for 10 days. He doesn't own it, but he has to give him an animal for 10 days. To complete the hundred. Now, if it happened a second time that he borrowed it for 70 days, now, if it happened a second time, then the owner owes a second cow to the renter because he now borrowed another cow. Forget about whether it's the same cow or not. Let's just say he borrowed another cow and the cow died. He owes him now the value of that second cow. And if it was during that 70 days of the, um, of the borrowing, the second din is just like the first din. So he has to give him four cows. Two cows he has to give him permanently because those are the two cows that... Um, that uh, he, he swears that there was no foul play. It's as if two cows died. Only one cow died, mind you. But it's as if two cows died, one in the first cycle, one in the second cycle. Right? He, because he can't return the cow. He doesn't have a cow to return to him. Right? But he has to give him cows to to fulfill the days of the rental. So ball the other Bahari Yeshlo Allah, Shte Tvios, I'll stay Sha'elos, U Shay Tvios, I'll stay Schiros. So he has two tinas to him on the two cows that quote unquote died, and, and he owes him the money, and he has to give him two cows to fill up to fulfill the period of rental. Lasis Esla Esram Yom. So he has 20 days of rental. So so what happened here? So what happened here is it started with 100 days and immediately after uh, he, uh, after um, Reuben rented from Shimon, Shimon says, can I borrow? Reuben says, of course, and he borrows it for 90 days. Then Shimon comes back and says, I know I lent it to you, but I need it again. So I want to rent it a second time. He says, okay. And he gives it to him. To, uh, uh, so, so he rents it, but then Shimon comes and says, but I still need to borrow it for 70 days. He borrows it for 70 days. So now, at the, although we have two events, it's all wrapped up into one cow. We're not talking about multiple cows. We're talking about one cow that bounced from me to you, from me to you, says the Gemara here in this case, because halachically, they are separate events. Each one has to be taken. You can't lump them together at least in our thinking here, you can't lump them together and say, what are you talking about? This is one cow that bounced back and forth. What are you telling me? Two cows, four cows? No. Each cow, that when a cow died, you owe him money for the cow. Now, the fact that in the interim he had re-rented it, that's immaterial. So when it dies after the second borrowing, in some total, he owes him two cows, two cows that he has to pay him and two cows that he has to rent him or allow him to use for 10 days each. Because remember, he, he, he rented for 90, uh, for 100 and borrowed for 90, and then he rented for 80 and borrowed for 70. So you have 10 days at the end of each cycle of which the renter 
is entitled to a cow. So the owner has to come up with four cows, two to pay him permanently, and two that he can use for 20 days each. Now, this is a bizarre situation, but says Reb Zera, this is what can happen under this kind of situation. Yeah, Michael. Rabbi, it's not paying the cow permanently. It's paying for the use of it for that time. I mean, when you say he has to, he gets it permanently, this is for a finite time. Ownership and rental are different. So he has to provide a cow for use for that period, but it's, he didn't own the cow at all. He had, and I don't understand why they don't, why the, why the. So, so uh, you're, you're saying that there should be no payment on the cow? No, I think they should. First of all, I think there should be, once you go into a second transaction, um, there's a loan, there should be a requirement that he reimburses them for the period that he loaned them back. So in other words, you know, I know he, he's, he rented the cow. No, no, no. That's you, a business you, you, you would be right. You would be right if if the the if the renter and this is what Yale was mentioning before is a bad businessman. If the renter said, you know what, let's cancel this transaction and let's start again. If that happened, then I agree with you. the The transaction ended. There's some payment that has to be made for a few days of, of, of rental or whatever it happens to be. And we roll back and we start again. But that didn't happen here. What happened here was that in one fact pattern, in one cycle, a, a, a guy rented it for 100 days, lent it back to the owner for 90. In the meantime, the renter says, I really need this animal. And although I, I, I lent it to you and, and I don't get any reimbursement, but, I, but I'm a good guy, I need to have it back. I want to rent it again because I need it. So the Shoel, who is not such a nice guy, instead of saying, okay, take it back, he says, okay, I'll rent it to you again. Again, it's not Mr. Nice Guy. It's just, this is a, this is a transaction that occurred. And he says, okay, so now pay me $80 for 80 days of rental. Fine. So now how much has he paid him? He's paid him $100 and now $80. So now the guy has $180 in his pocket and he has the hood spread. He goes back to the, to the renter and says, but you know, can you lend it to me again? Because I do need it for 70 days. And, and that, again, the guy and says- That's the problem I have because that is, that's not honest. That is not Halachically, that should be. But, but it's an permit. arm's length. But you, you're right, Mike. It may not be a nice thing, but it's an arm's length transaction between two people who are willing to enter. But but you know, it sounds the, bizarre. It sounds bizarre. The, I agree. The halachas are so medactic on protecting business transactions. So for the guy to come back and ask again and not reimburse him for the period that. You know, he loaned it. So he actually made money off of them. Right. And then he loaned it, you know, and then he takes it back for 90% of the period. Right. And then he gets him to pay again, which is taking money under false pre pretenses. But, but the guy's willingly entered. You see, I, I don't disagree with you if a guy comes back and says, I have a time what do, you, what do you mean I have to pay you again? Why should I pay you again? I already paid you the first time. But but he's he, he's not that way. He's saying, okay, I'll go along with it. The, the halacha protects us from, from, from untoward actions between one person and another. But if two people voluntarily, uh, let's say he was a nice guy, he had a lot of money to burn, and he says, I don't mind, I'll pay you again, it doesn't matter. Uh, or uh, Yale said he's a bad businessman, or, or he or he was just uh, lazy, and he said, you know what? I don't really care. I'll give you another hundred. May maybe he wanted to give him tzedakah, and this was a, a covert way or clandestine way of giving him stuff. The halacha could be that he gets, you know, he's, you know, that's a transaction. He can't get that cow back. He, he can rent another cow for himself. Right. I mean, he's trying. He's taking a business transaction and abusing, and you know. We're about Torah ethics. It's just not, it does not seem it doesn't appropriate. Seem, it doesn't seem appropriate. I, I will not dispute that this, this is a bizarre fact pattern, but it's a fact pattern that can actually happen because the two parties are armed. I get it. And, I and get it. Like, but, but, but the part that I have a real problem is that he has to replace the cow permanently. There's no permanence here. 
It was all for a finite duration. He has to make but, him. But hold. remember the halacha. Remember the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, "Hasocha per mechaveru veheshi l'acher umeisa kedarka yishava hasocha shemeisa kedarka v'hashoel yishalem l'socher." The shoel has to pay to the socher the value, the full value of the animal. So we started with a halacha. The halacha is that since a, a, a soaker is not tied in own sin, in, in uh, accidental death, he's free. The shoel, on the other hand, because he pays no money, is chayiv in own sin. So if there is an ones, meaning it died naturally, he has to pay the value of the cow. That's undisputed. That I agree with, right. but the question is- Since it happened is it? a second time, it happened a second time. I understand that. that. And even with that home. second time, it should be that the owner still was renting. The, the ownership was for, for the life of the cow. And so the, the um, uh, Shoel has to pay, but it should be divided between the Socher and so, the owner. Right. Okay. So we're not, I mean, we're, we're not going to be able to get it right now because we have to stop. Right. But your point is what the Gemara discusses going forward. How do we look at this as one cow, one transaction, or two cows? Because you're saying, but it's still the same cow. And that's the point of it, that we're still playing with one cow. We didn't right. create a second cow. But right. but it would seem, it would seem, and again, this is where the letter of the law, you, you look at the letter of the law, is it's as if there were two cows, one cow in the first cycle and another cow in the second cycle. And for each cow, you're chayiv to pay the value of the cow because you're chayiv in onsen. So on the surface, it looks like you have twice killed this cow and twice having to pay right. for the cow and not only having to pay for the cow, but twice having to give him another cow to fill the days of his rental that went unfulfilled. Because remember, he borrowed it for 70 out of the 80. He borrowed it for 90 out of the 100. Right. What about right. the other? So it adds right. insult to injury. Not only does right. he pay for the cow, but you got to give an extra cow so he can do the work. Yeah. This is a bizarre, very yeah. unusual. Yeah. But, but that's it's what the yeah. that, that based on this Mishnah, look at what can come out. This is actually the point that we're trying to make yeah. is how unusual and bizarre this, this whole fact pattern is. But like, uh, like, uh, like another law in the Torah, you could say this uh, never happened and never will happen. But and, Rabbi, yeah, law is Rabbi, Rabbi Zero was very interested in illustrating the peculiarities of the difference between the law of a Sofer and a Shoel. Right, right, exactly, exactly. But, 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 but the fact, and again, that's where the Gemara will come in and, and, and the, that's what the Machlaitis Michael will be, is that you, you can't create out of whole cloth right. two cows when there's one cow. But, right. but, but on the surface, when you go with the letter of the law, mm -hmm. and, and, and again, I understand your point, it's not fair, he didn't do right, but you know what? These parties transacted openly and willingly. And, and whether or not uh, he took advantage of him or not, the guy didn't have to uh, 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 let him borrow it for 70 days or 90 days. He willingly said, sure, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I'm renting it for 100, but I only need it for 10. Go take it for 90. But see, uh, one last thought, and that is before we learned, it was the, the, um, the Gemara is so careful to protect the interests of the seller and the buyer. To make sure that you know people are willing to lend, right. and people are you know, and so this is kind of making a mockery of that whole situation, which would seem to me uh, the the um, dinim uh, dayanim would be um, you know protect in an uproar about. In other words, protect him from himself. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I can't I can't disagree with you. I cannot disagree with you, but but in terms of the actual letter of the law, now, this may not be the maskan of the halacha, but in terms right. of the letter of the law, the, the Gemara wants to show us a bizarre situation that can come out of this Mishnah if, right. you, if you take it I to get the it. fullest, um, right? So sometimes the Gemara is about an exercise of thought. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right? a great argument. Yep. Right, so, so according to this, there would be a situation where this poor owner is not only renting 
a, a cow to his friend or to, to, to a customer, but he's having to take money and pay for the value of the cow, not once, but twice. Right. So, you know, how does that happen? Okay, so, so, so that's the exercise of what we're talking about, notwithstanding your points. And your points are all well taken, and the Gemara will all deal with that. But Reb Zera wants to show us how bizarre something can happen in that kind of circumstance. It's exactly the point. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so that's the end of, of the actual discussion. I think we'll stop because now we're going to go into the answer. In other words, we've asked the Kasha. The Kasha is, L'chaira, it seems as if the owner now has tied himself into a pickle here by having to repay uh, a, a one cow, a second cow, and, and give him a third cow to, re to rent for 10 days, and a fourth cow to rent for 10 days, as Rashi just explained. So th this is this is the Shaila. So let's keep that thought. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it mention next week, but then we're gonna get into the to the machloikis, into the, what is the answer to really that question? Is this really happening? I mean, can, can this really happen where a person can uh, uh, wind up being the, 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 of the short end of, of, uh, of such a transaction when he's the owner? And not only does he not own the cow, he's got to pay somebody else uh, to be the owner of the cow. But, but the bottom line, what's, uh, just to review, is the, the key machloikis here is at what point in time does ownership transfer? And that we said earlier is a machloikis as to whether it transfers at the moment of death of the animal or the moment of the shvua. Because if you say it's the moment of the shvua, then the owner has the latitude to say, don't swear, stay out, let me deal. But if it has nothing to do with the shvua, it has to do with Nisa, that he's not in control because the moment the animal died, it's out of his hands. Then he's stuck with the renter being the owner. So that, that's, that's, that is the key machlaik is, uh, that the Gemara wants to shed here. And uh, then, then comes this situation. So Mr. Shem, next week we'll, we'll pick it up and we'll see how, how we come to grips with this, uh, with this unusual situation.